Now watch this. You say, I got faith. Everybody got faith. Come on. Now watch this. Faith must be followed with actions that are consistent in what is believed. It must be followed by action. If this word say you got to forgive, you got to forgive. If the, if, if the, if the word say you got to love people unconditionally, you got to love people unconditionally. If the word says, look, I don't, I don't want you to go to those places or I don't want you to listen to certain things, you got to do it. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Faith is the noun form and believe is the verb from the same Greek word. So faith is the ability to believe. Okay, you believe, right? But that ability must be used and acted upon for faith to come alive and work. So you can say, oh, you know, I believe. But it don't show in your actions. It's just like somebody say, I forgive you, but then they still treat you like dirt. Are y'all with me? See, believing is an action side of faith. Believing is acting in faith. Just having faith is not enough. Let me say it again. Just having faith is not enough. Having the ability to believe is not enough. One must act on that ability by acting consistent in what is believed. James tells us this in James 2.17. Look what it says. James 2.17. This, this proves my point. Even so, faith, if it have not what? Is what? Is dead. Being what? Alone. Wow. So James tells us that faith without corresponding action is lifeless and dead. In the same way, faith by itself is not accomplished by action is dead. Now, a better word for dead in this verse above might be dormant. Okay? Unproductive or inoperative. See, actions are needed to bring faith to life. See how these corresponding actions were needed to make their faith come alive and be productive. Now, the author of the Hebrews, once again, he defines faith. Look at it, Hebrews 11.1. 1. It, says, it says, the substance of things, what? The evidence of things. So, watch this. Faith fills the vacuum of hope. Hope, when coupled with faith, has substance. And substance is something rather than nothing. Now, faith also provides evidence that which is not visible. Faith is not blind. Watch this, because you got to get this. Faith is not blind. Indeed, far from being blind, it is both far-sighted and sharp-sighted. Now, watch this, because well, you say, wait, wait a minute, it said you can't see it, so why are you saying it's not blind? Watch this. It's evidence rest not on speculation, but on confidence in God. Okay? So I can't see it, but my confidence is in God. You see, I, I, I can't see it, but my confidence is in what? God. I don't know how he's going to do it, but my confidence is what? In God. So, but my confidence in God who sees what I cannot see. There you go. I can't see it, but God sees it. It rests on trust and re uh, re reliability of every promise that is uttered by God. It is one thing to believe in God. It's quite another to believe God. Can I need to say that again? It's one thing to believe in God. It's a, quite another to believe God. Okay. Abraham believed God when he said he would show him, a, when God said he would show him a better country. He, he believed God later when God dramatized his covenant promise in Genesis 15. And by his faith, Abraham was counted righteous. He was justified by his what? Faith. See, what made Abraham's faith genuine? Didn't he, didn't he fail at times? But what made his faith genuine? 
it is seen that he obeyed God by faith. He obeyed God by faith. See, true faith is always obedient faith. Let me say it again. Man, y'all getting some nuggets. True faith is always what? Obedient faith. Now watch this. Abraham obeyed the call of God on his life, and he demonstrated this obedience when he went out. God said, okay, I want you to leave your family, your friends, your relatives, I want you, and I want you to go to a place that you've never been. Now he couldn't see it, right? But God knew it. Now watch this. Watch this. Hebrews 11.8. Look at this. It says, this is, this is so powerful. Hebrews, by faith, when he was called to go out into a place where he should have to receive an inheritance, obeyed. Now, watch this. They obeyed was action because, look what he said, and he went out not knowing whether he went. He didn't know where he was going, but he did it. He just did what? He obeyed. Now, we're almost there. Now, if you feel like you are just a leap away from becoming the Christian you really want to be and you don't know how to make the jump, here's some things that you can do to revolutionize your change in your faith. How can you grow in faith? Because we're talking about stretching faith. Next week, I think I'm going to be talking, no, Father's Day, but the week after, we're going to be talking about it, and I think that's the appropriate time about stretching our faith. But look at this. First of all, God has dealt every person a different measure of faith. Okay, everybody's not at the same level when it comes to what? Faith. Now watch this. Romans 12, 3. It says this. What does it say? Romans 12, 3. For I say, though grace given unto him to every man that is among you, not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man, what? The measure of faith. Okay? And then Romans uh, 117 says, look at this, Romans 7 saying, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed, what? From what? From faith to faith, as it is written, what? The just shall live, what? Now what? Watch this, though. watch this. Watch this. It means getting to know him better. And getting to know him more this week than you did last week. And more today than you. See, some of us, we, we, know, we, we, we don't know more than we did five years ago. We're still, we still doing the same thing. We know how to speak the religious jargon. We know how to say the right things. But we're not growing. Our root is not strengthening. And that's why we act carnal. That's why we do things. We live a night, night life. We do, we do things that are not right with God. Now watch this. God wants us to have faith and to increase our faith. But how? It's not something we can just wish for or work or on on our own. How can we grow in faith? What does it mean to have faith and to move mountains, and how can we grow? See, regarding his second coming, Jesus asked a question. This is what Jesus asked a question when he's coming back. This is the question that Jesus is going to ask in Luke 18, 8. This is, look, this is so powerful. Look at this. Look what he says. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith on the earth. Shall he find a lifestyle that you are supposed to be living? Shall, shall, shall you be doing what you're supposed to be doing? Or do you just say, I believe in God? Why was Jesus concerned about people having faith? Hebrews 11, 6 again tells us why faith is so important to God. But without faith, it is impossible to plead God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them who diligently seek him. See, God expects us to have faith. And if we really believe God and live according to that faith, then God will be pleased. Okay? Enoch, he walked with God. And God, God, God loved him so much that God took him. He just, he just snatched him up. And he didn't taste death. God just took him because his life pleased God so much. And there's only two people in the Bible that didn't die. And that was Enoch and that was Elijah. Two people that didn't, that didn't die because God just took them. Now watch this. 
because you got to get this. If we're going to be blessed, if you're going to be blessed, but lacking faith and failing to live by faith displeases God. Why? Because God's honor is at stake. God's honor is at stake. Every time you do something that is not in line with what his word and other people that are not saved see that, they're saying, I don't want to be one of those. If that's what Christianity is all about, I, I, look, what's the difference if they go to church they pray, they read the Bible, but they do everything I do. They, look, they listen to everything I listen to. Come on. Now, I know some of y'all saying, I hope you hurry up and get through with this because I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling with this. You know why? Because your cultural upbringing has got you that way. And you're here in truth. Now watch this. Faith is an unshakable belief in God and promises of God. Faith also involves God's command. We, we're expected to put such confidence in everything God tells us to do that we actually do it. And that's, that's not always easy. Let me tell you, it's not always easy doing what God tells you to do. So how do we dishonor God by a lack of faith? When we disbelieve God, we are in essence saying to God, I don't really believe you will do exactly what you said you do, and I don't really believe that you are what you say you are, and God's response is, I am a promise-keeping God. So a lack of faith insults God. So when I say a lack of faith, a lack of lifestyle. A lack of lifestyle. See, God always keeps his promise. He, he's made to human beings, and he, and he always will, provided, of course, that we meet the conditions of the outline. Now, faith is one of the key qualities that God is looking for us, so it only makes sense that we make sure we have it. I'm going to go five more minutes, and I'm going to quit. Let's look at this, and I'm going to quit on this one, degrees of faith, because well, we've got to get ourselves ready. Don't forget about the women for the meeting. Okay, watch this, degrees of faith. Now, watch this. When it comes to a subject of faith, it is only a matter of having it or not having it. The Bible makes it clear that there are degrees of faith. Jesus describes some people of his day as having little faith and others as having great faith. So it's good to ask ourselves, how much faith do we currently have? And how dedicated are we to increasing our faith? See, our faith needs to be growing. None of us has enough of it. See, when you get satisfied and say, oh, I'm where I need to be in God, you're in trouble. Oh, I, I, I'm, I have arrived. You can't tell me. You know, it's amazing how when people get saved and then they see people who've been in the church a long time and they see you doing something wrong and they say, well, I thought the Bible, and you say, you can't tell me that I've been saved a long time. And you just new to this. Come on. See, there's, there, there's nothing our world needs more desperately today in individuals, families, businesses, churches, pastors, communities, than God saving supernatural acts. And God is ready to act if we be bold enough to ask, not just for a good day or a better life, but for the impossible, and then step forward to act in this faith. Look what he says here. John 15, 7. We're going back to opening text. 15, 7, 7, and 8. John 15, 7. Yes, yeah, 7, 8. It said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ye shall what? Ask what you will, and it shall what? Hear in, ear, hear in with is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so you may be my disciple. Now watch this. Watch this, because we're getting ready to wrap this up. Some of us, we don't expect the best. That's why we can't, that's why we struggle with our Christianity. What I mean by that, and, I, and, I, and I'm closing this, what I mean by that. There's a classic saying that a lot of people use, including some Christians. Watch this. Expect the worst and hope for the best. Now, I know the heart behind the phrase. I know it means we should 
prepare contingencies in case our plans fail. Okay? But still, I find it to be a horrible saying. You know why? Because the problem is that it misunderstands the nature of expectations. Expectation is a form of faith. Your expectation, your expectation is the belief that what you're hoping for is actually going to happen. Not your backup plan to take care of yourself in case it doesn't. You can't hope for God's best if you're believing in the worst. Did you hear what I said? You can't, believe, you can't expect God to do something if you're believing in the worst. You can't hope to get a job you desperately need if you're expecting to get turned down. You can't hope that God is going to restore your marriage if you're expecting to sign the divorce papers any day now. How many of us have had such a strong expectation of the best that we are prepared to lower ourselves over the side of the boat and place the ball of our foot on the uncertainty of the water like Peter did? Jesus is calling us today, come to me. Come toward your future. I have you. And so expect the best. Hope for the best. Accept what God allows and give him the glory. So the question that we go back to is the question. What's the title? Huh? Allow God to our Say it again. What is it? Huh? Is your root system of faith growing? That's the title. Allowing God, no, see, that's the, what does that say? Sermon series. But it says strengthening the root system of your faith. So under that, there are going to be different categories. You understand that? Okay. So we're, we're getting ready to pray. Now, like I said, I can't even make you live right. I can't make you do right. I can't make you do anything, but I can continue just to love you and to give you the word, to give you the unadulterated, pure word. We've got to do more than do church. It's a lifestyle. Okay? What if you saw me somewhere out and you was just out eating and, and I had some woman in the corner all over her. Come on. Come on. Phyllis got her knife out. She getting ready to cut me. Come on. But, but you understand, it's not all right for the pastor to do, but it's all right for the members to do. But that's, that's the way I see it a lot of times. What if y'all saw me out on the nightclub at the club? I was just getting down. Y'all know I can't. I ain't got no rhythm. I, 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 I was just, hey, ho, hey. All up, all up on the woman and everything, doing this and everything. What I, and, 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 and Sister Mickles walked in. She would be just guilty, too, because I say, what you doing there? <laughs> But when I'm, when, when, I'm, when I'm trying to say, it's got to be a lifestyle. I eat God, I breathe God, I sleep God. Am I perfect? No. But, man, my lifestyle, or let me say, my faith must be my actions. Not my, just what I believe. It's got to be my actions. Now, read, read Psalm 78, like I said, because it'll blow you away. And you know why we got engrafted in? Because God said, I'm going to make the Jews jealous. They didn't want to do right, so I'll, I'll find somebody who want to do right. And if you're not going to do right, God said, I'll still love you, but I'm going to find somebody who would appreciate who I am in their life. Let's stand.